Having your plugins be as configurable and customizable as possible is always a good thing, especially in the eyes of server owners who might be interested in using your plugin. If you're new to Java, then you might struggle to follow along with my Minecraft tutorials. Don't worry though, I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare. This course has around 50 videos and nearly four hours of content that are all designed for the beginner. So if you're new to Java, then this is the perfect place to start. Go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment to sign up for free. Now there are two types of configuration files. The first one is going to be a default configuration and the second one, it can be a custom configuration with any name you want. Let's dive into how default configurations work first. So inside my resources folder, I can right click, go to new file, and I'm going to name a file specifically config.yml. This will be our default configuration file. And in here, you can add in whatever you want as long as it follows YML syntax. And for now, I'm just gonna create a list of items called a kit, which is going to be the items I want to give a user whenever they join. So I'll add in a couple here, for example, diamond sword, as well as diamond chest plate. You can add in whatever you want and server owners can also add in whatever they want. And that's the whole point of a configuration file. For now, let's go into my main class. And within my on enable method, I want to call save default config. This will automatically save this configuration here into our plugins folder if it doesn't exist already. Now, before I test this out, I want to go ahead and read everything from the configuration and see if we can get access to the material for each individual item. So for example, here I have git config, which returns a file configuration. I can now call git list and I can pass in the key, which is going to be kit. A list is going to be something that has all these dashes here, basically a list of all the items in this case. Now these are going to be lists of strings. So I'm going to create a list object from Java util, which is going to have the type of string. And I'm going to call this kit items. We have to cast this equal to list string. So now afterwards I can loop through these. And for now, I'm just going to log them to the console. But of course, if you wanted to, you could listen for the player join event and give these items to the player, but we're not going to focus too much on that. So let's dive into a for loop here. I could say string item name, and we're going to loop through all of the kit items. Now inside of this, I'm simply going to log us to the console. So bucket.getlogger.info. Here I can log item name. And now I'm going to go ahead and compile this with Maven and try it out on my server. So my server just restarted. And here within the console, I see diamond sword and diamond chest plate. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to get more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Now let's dive into custom configurations because a overly large config YML might be confusing for some users. So it's often a best practice to separate your configurations into different files when it makes sense to. Now, instead of coding everything in our on enable, I'm actually going to create a helper class for us. So inside my main project here, I'm going to make a new package called util. And then inside of that package, I'm going to make a new class, which is going to be called config util. Now inside of this, we want to create two private properties. So I can say private file. I'm going to call this file and this will be the actual file for our configuration. We're going to have another property, which is going to be called file configuration, which is going to be our configuration file. Now we're going to have two constructors. So I can say public config util. I'm going to go ahead and copy this once more. So now we have two different constructors. The first one is going to take in a plugin instance called plugin as well as a path. The second one is simply just going to take in a path. So I want this first constructor to call the second constructor and we're doing this so we can gain access to what's known as the data folder, which is going to be the main folder for our plugins. As you can see here, I have my server and then I have my plugins folder. This is going to be the data folder. So within this first constructor, I can say this, I can now pass in plugin dot get data folder dot get absolute path. I can now add on forward slash and then add on the path. So path could be armor.yml, test.yml, whatever you basically want to name your configuration file. Now within this constructor, we want to go ahead and access that file inside of a local file property. So I can say this.file equals a new instance of a file passing in the path. I can also say this.config equals YAML configuration dot load configuration. And here we can pass in the file we just created. So I can reference this.file. And now we have access to both the actual Java file as well as the configuration so we can add and store things to it. Now there's three more simple things we want to do. The first of which is to create a public function called save, which is going to return a Boolean. And this is going to try and save the file. It will return true if it was able to save and it will return false if an exception occurred. So I can say try and then catch. And you can catch a specific exception if you want. For now, I'm just going to say exception. I can print this to the console and then I can go ahead and return 
false, meaning that something went wrong. Within try, I can return true. But of course, above this, we want to actually try and save the file. So I can say this.config.save. And here we can pass in a file so I can reference this.file. So we're trying to save our local configuration file to the exact file path. Now, last thing we want to do is to create two simple getters for our file and our config. So I can say public file, get file, and go ahead and return this.file. I can also say public file configuration, get config, and now I can return this.config. So now this class is complete. Let's go ahead and use it. Within our main class here, I'm going to create a new configuration file. So config util config equals new config util. Now here we can pass in this, which is going to be a reference to our plugin right here so we can gain access to the data folder. And then we also want a string, which is going to be the actual name or the path for our target configuration. In this case, I'm going to say test.yml. And now I'm going to write something to the configuration by saying config.getconfig. And here we can go ahead and use set or we can use get to either write things or retrieve things from our configuration. In this case, I want to set the path hello equal to world, and then I can say config.save. And of course, if it makes sense for your use case, you can check the Boolean results of this function call to see if the configuration was actually saved. Now I'm gonna go ahead and compile this and keep note that we are targeting this as test.yml, but we do not have a test YML within the resources folder, but that's okay because our configuration is gonna go ahead and create it for us. I can go ahead and restart my server. So my server just restarted and now we see my test.yml file. I can go ahead and open that and we see the key of hello and the value of world. So we now have a working configuration system. And if you want to make your plugins even more user-friendly, click on the video here to create your own custom GUI menus.